one, I've been running this strategy for a year. It's made me a hell of a lot better of a trader, and it's made a lot of our group members in the Discord a hell of a lot better of a trader. I'm going to go ahead and just dish this out to anyone out there that wants to learn it. Of course, if you want to come utilize the tools we have in the group to take advantage of the strategy, you're more than welcome to with a free trial in the description below. But if you're just interested for the strategy, then this video is for you. Stay tuned. I'm going to get into all of it right now for you, and I'm going to go over all of it in detail so that hopefully you can pick up the strategy and use it while it's still viable in the market, and it will be a viable strategy until the repo demand comes down. And again, this is the core logic for our group. We've been trading it for a year. Many, many people have found success with this, and it's not anything genius. It's just the consistency of it taking advantage of the current market situation, and none of this is financial advice. Let's get started. And again, if you would like to learn more about trading and have a fun time while you're doing it, free description in the or free trial in the description below, uh, one week free. Uh, if you want to just exploit us like we exploit the RSI, go for it. No hard feelings. Let's get into this real quick. So, what is the core logic? Well, fundamentally, it's basically RSI exploitation. Now, the RSI, if you weren't aware, was the it is the relative strength index, which is an indicator that you can use when trading. It's one of the most reliable that I've came across. And again, it's the key component of this strategy. Let's go ahead and begin now. So part one, we're going to go over the chart setup. It's very simple, nothing too fancy. This is your ideal setup here. When it comes to indicators, you're going to want your MACD indicator on your standard default settings, and then your RSI on the 14 day setting, and then you're going to want gap detection feature turned on. Weeble is a brokerage that offers this for an example. Um, you're allowed to see five gaps at any point in time. Um, I've heard TD Ameritrade has this as well. You're going to want to make sure you have gap detection so you don't miss any gaps with the naked eye. It's always better to have software detect this for you so you don't miss any gaps, especially if it is needed for play criteria. So this is your ideal setup here. Gap detection is up top. Your RSI is right here, and the way the RSI works, you have two lines. The top line is 70, bottom line is 30. We're going to get into that in a second. And this is your MACD. Basically, the MACD works like this. Whenever these lines here touch, it creates a signal which changes the color. For example, when this orange line passed uh, above this blue one, it crossed the signal green, but then it went right back down and crossed right back below the blue one, turning it red again. That's how it works. Now let's keep moving forward here. So the logic behind why we use these indicators. The daily chart is the time frame you're going to want to be on when identifying plays, always. The RSI is used because the RSI is used to identify when the RSI becomes broken, or for calls below 30, or for puts above 70. That is a broken RSI. You can see here the RSI is currently broken below 30. MACD, you want to use it to identify a banana shape. It looks just like this. It starts to curve down and it is a byproduct of this gap being created. Last but not least and the most important, and this is actually the first thing that happens in this whole sequence of events, is you want to play directly after earnings which is what creates the gap in the first place, which is what breaks the RSI, which is what creates the banana shape. So in sequence, it's literally a straight line down your computer screen. You start at the gap, and then from the gap, you should see an E, and then from the E, you should see either the RSI above this 70 line for puts or below this 30 line for calls. And then you keep going down and you should see that banana shape on the MACD. If all of those things align, you can move on to the options chain and ensure that the rest of the criteria matches before you go ahead and hit the buy button. But before you want to buy anything, you obviously want to know your risk management. But if anything, remember these things. Daily chart is where you're looking. The earnings creates the gaps, which breaks the RSI, which shapes the MACD. Very essential to remember that. Now we're going to get into the entrance real quick, which is when we're going to get into the options chain a little bit. So that's the first part is identifying the plays using the chart on the daily for those criteria. 
Next, we're going to look at entrance and risk management. So your entrance strategy, when, when, when going with a strike price, you're going to want to go with in the money strikes. Now, what is in the money? If you look at these shaded regions here, in the money means a couple of different things. Shaded region in the money for calls is going to be above the current price. I'm sorry, below the current price. The shaded region for puts is going to be above the current price. Now, being in the money gives you intrinsic value, which means you have value built in to the contracts, meaning that you will lose value from theta less than you would if you were out of the money. Now, again, in the money, this is crucial. They are a little bit more pricey of contracts, but it, it's what makes the strategy work is when you go in the money, it's because that intrinsic value. Now your hold time for these is going to be around three to five days. That's the average is three to five day hold time. And again, in the money calls are below the current price and in the money puts are above the current price. That's important to keep in mind. Now, these are things to watch out for, um, those second set of criteria I was talking about. You want to watch out for corporate actions, which appear like they are gaps up. It, it looks like it meets all criteria, but when you de uh, delve into it further, you'll notice that if it's a gap up that consolidates for a short period of time, it's typically a corporate action. Uh, but those are rare, and typically they are found on put plays, not call plays. And the put plays have been kind of dry lately due to the, you know, the entire market tanking. But... You definitely want to keep an eye out for that. And you also want to watch out for high implied volatility. This is crucial. Uh, typically, we found in the group that staying below 100% IV is ideal and most lucrative because as soon as you get above that, then it seems to get a little wish-washy and you don't profit as much as you typically do if it's below 100%. So obviously, you want to stay below 100% with the IV. And if everything here checks out and you know if, if you can, you can try to follow the uh, the volume, but this is probably the most important thing right here of anything of all, is avoid paying the ask price. Never buy the ask, always aim for the bid or lower if you can. Never ever buy the ask because if you do that, most of the time these core plays are illiquid so you will be stuck with a very bad position and it will be hard to profit from. So you definitely wanna be more patient and this strategy does teach you patience. Aim for the bid, be patient, set limits, and just be patient. It will make night and day difference. Never buy the ass. And if you can, um, it's sometimes, and this helps a lot, if the volume matches where you would, you know, according to the strategy, buy your strike price being in the money, then follow the volume. And, and to Nike's case today, that's exactly what happened. Um, the volume was likely being sold here. But if you ever see the in-the-money volume stacked like that on your side of the equation, uh, it's definitely a good confirming metric. If you can, follow the volume. Now, exiting, this is very important that you follow this rule because if this happens, you must exit. It is the easiest exit strategy ever. It, it preserves your portfolio, and you always have another shot at a core play because it's a daily play opportunity strategy. There's new opportunities for core typically every single day. So if you bought calls, let's say you bought $86 calls for Nike and the price goes to $85.80, that is when you get out. If you bought $85 puts and the price goes to $86, that is when you get out. As soon as your option contract goes out of the money and loses that intrinsic value, that is when you get out every time, no matter what, to preserve the win ratio which is, by the way, 85%. And that's really being modest. It's a little bit higher, 87 or so percent. But let's just say 85% chance, which is pretty good. If you can stay consistent and do everything that was just described in the manner described. And again, not financial advice. You can paper trade the strategy if you want, which is what I would recommend. But it's what our core logic is. And it works. It's worked for a long time. Um, it works only with consistency and patience, and it is what it is. It's literally made, I would not exist in the markets if it was not for the strategy. Because once you get this consistency down, you it's a builder strategy. You, you play core to build other ideas like you know Spy 500 or China, things like that. 
And the easiest way to find plays, obviously, again, if you're in the group, then you have commands that automatically find these plays for you. It's a simple slash FUD stop. It brings up everything. You can run the core screeners for calls and puts. And then all you have to do on your end is go through and make sure that they meet criteria and then pick your strike and you're good to go and just follow the, the process. And another quick note, avoid healthcare and ETFs. These are for people outside the group because in the group, you automatically have this built in the screener for you. But if you're not in the group, then you're going to want to make sure to remember, avoid healthcare and ETFs. We've gotten effed on them a lot in the past. So just saving you some pain there. Now, one last thing we're going to do is just check today's core play results. Um, and, you know, typically this happens even if the market doesn't run like it did today, core plays still pan out. That's why it's core. It's not seasonal. It works year round and it works for a variety of different reasons. One of them being the market wide institutional ownership, two being the settlement window was today, three being they're liquid, four being they're used as non cash collateral and the repo market and so on and so forth. And mainly because there's no fr uh, free shares trading. But these are the, the results today. It's going to go through these real quick. Nike panned out, and I want you to pay attention to remember all the criteria we just went over. I want you to look at these charts and see it's the same thing on all of them. So what do we see here? Remember that straight line? Gap down, earnings, broken RSI, banana. Checked out, green day. Next, we have KMX. Straight line, gap down. Earnings was actually the day after the gap down, but that's okay. Still worked. You're going to get earnings either the day before or the day of the gap down. Sometimes it happens before, but 90% of the time it's going to happen on earnings, but it's around earnings. That's why it's most important to play after, because if you would have played before earnings here, even though it gapped down, it's you still wouldn't have panned out because that was a bad day. But if you would have waited until the day of earnings, you would have been good to go. And it panned out today. Next, we have SNX, same thing. You wait till after earnings, gaps down, and then today you would have had a nice day. Broken RSI, got corrected today, and that's essentially what you're exploiting. Before today, this RSI was down here, but after today, you would have sold for profit, you would have exploited the RSI, everything's there, checks out, it's consistent every time. Here we have one that didn't work out, and again, this isn't 100% strategy, but CCL did not pan out today. Everything was there. And te we're going to we're going to count this one as it didn't work. Technically speaking, if you would this showed up yesterday on the screener. So, if you would have done what you're supposed to and go through this and look at it, you would have noticed that the RSI wasn't quite broken. It was it was it's a little it's 2903 I guess is what it was, which is close enough, but um this one let's just say didn't work out. So that we're going to count this one as a no-go. Next we have BB. This one panned out. We do have a small gate daily gap on this chart, but again, broken RSI, banana, all checks out. This one here was not core, um, CBRL, because there was no daily gap on the chart. So if you run across a core play screener result that comes up and there's no gap, skip it. It's not core. Here's one, daily gap existed, play right after earnings, boom, would have profited day one and two. RSI just got over that oversold line today, a good exploit there. Then we have WOR, another minuscule gap. This one was a great exploit. Um, <laughs> RSI was oversold down here today, corrected all the way up, way over that line today, and made for a really nice day if you bought on the day of earnings. Then we have MLKN, which also worked out. Gap down on earnings, broken RSI. This one still has a little bit of room to go before it's corrected. And then you have the MACD banana. But do you see how they're all consistent setups? That is the beauty of it. So you do the same thing over and over, and it works out. And then we have Cuck. <laughs> Good old Cuck. So Cuck does not apply because it did not have earnings. So I'm not even sure why it showed up on the screener. Or maybe it did, it's just not showing up here. That's funny. Cuck, consumer cyclical. This one. This one, it would still be a hold. You'd still want to hang on to this one. I'm not. Maybe there was earnings today. I'm not sure. Hopefully, that'll come up tomorrow. And then these three here, none of these three were core because if you look, this one had no daily gap. 
RSI wasn't broken. This one had no daily gap. RSI is not broken. This one, RSI is broken. Back the banana has a daily gap, but no earnings. So anyways, that's basically it. This should definitely help you achieve more success. You know, seven out of eight of these hit or 87.5%, about right on target. And uh, average, it's 85%. So, I mean, hey, way better than a coin flip and it's consistent logic. So hopefully this helped and uh, y'all have a good one.